There's a video I made some time ago where I take an image apart into its channels and I reassemble them uh, at one point additively and at another point subtractively. And I've gotten a lot of interest in that video, but I've also gotten questions about how exactly I made the color separations and moved them around on the screen. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Here's an image of just some random thing. It's an ice cream cone. And what we need to do is, um, let's see, make, I'm, I'm taking the uh, image and I'm dragging it down. One, two, three. So actually I have more, more than one, more copies than I need. I'm going to change this into a non-background image and just use that as well by double clicking it. Um, so what we need to do is to get the red separation, um, I generally just take a solid color and I make sure that that color is red, green, blue, 255, 0, 0. You, if you have swatches of that color, it's quicker. Um, but I just want to show you the actual values. So it's pure red. I set this to multiply and then I just right click and I merge down. Now I have a red channel, red, and I got that from the image, from image. And now I'm going to turn that, and the reason I specified that is because I'm going to show you another way to get a red channel, which you might be um, wondering why I didn't do it that way, getting it from the channels itself. Uh, and you'll see that it's slightly different because of the way Photoshop does color management. So let me turn that off for a second. And then uh, over here, I'll just get a solid color and I'll get zero. So pure green and right click. Oops, sorry. First of all, multiply. Now right click, merge down. So now I have this one on top of this one. Turn that off for a second. And now I have this one, and I want that one to be blue. So same deal, solid color, zero, zero, OK, multiply, right click, merge down. Now I have uh, all three color separations. So if I go like this, and I set uh, this one to um, linear dodge, add. Actually, I said I just said. Well, it doesn't matter what the bottom one is, but um, linear dodge, add. Go to the second one, linear dodge, add. So there's the image reconstructed. Now, if I say uh, image canvas size, and I say percentage, and I let's see, I want it to be four hundred percent. Because it's going to be three images side by side, plus I want a little extra. So I'm going to say 400%, uh, not relative, but absolute. And then, you know, let's say 200% up and down just for a little extra room in that direction as well. So if we say that, now we have these images and they're floating around in uh, a canvas that's quite large. So if I set this to auto select, then I can drag that out. Whatever I'm touching, the, the first thing I touch is selected. You can see it's selected over here drag that out. So here they are. Now, um, so that's it. So I can drag this to this and you can see that's um, magenta. I can do this to this and that's going to be cyan. I can do this to this and that's going to be yellow and I can put them all together and that reconstructs the image. And in the other video I have um, sort of uh, indications of what uh, like I have a one, a one, and a one, and it's kind of interesting because you can see, you know, there's only a zero, zero, one here, and a one, zero, zero here, and a zero, one, zero here, and then we're all put together, the ones all line up, and you can see that it makes a full color image, and it adds up to white. Um, so that's that. Now the one thing I just wanted to show you was that if I, if I, um, I'm undoing right now. Okay, now we're back to the image just where the canvas was like that, you know, size um, 
fitting the fitting the picture. So the the, the red from image is on top. Now I'm going to do a red from uh, channels. So I go to channels, and I go to the red separation. Here's the green. Here's the blue. I'm going to the red, and I say Control A, and then Control well, that selects everything, and then Control C, Command C on a Mac. And I go back to layers, and I believe I need to create a new layer at this point above. And then I can say Control V. Now, there you are. There's that red separation. It's in black and white, but it's that red separation that I that I pulled over from the channels. So now if I do the same thing again, and I put a um, red solid color, and let's say zero here, zero here. Okay, and I set this to multiply, and I set this to merge down. Now, this is red, red from channels. So now, if red from channels on, red from channels, I gotta take this blend mode off, so make that normal, so that the red doesn't add to everything below it. So red from channels, one more time, red from channels, and you see there's a slight difference in brightness right from image. Channels, image, channels, image, channels, image. So there's a tiny difference. So if you're never going to compare it back to the original image, it doesn't matter which method you use because you will, you'll never tell the difference. And no one else will know what the original image was supposed to exactly be. So it doesn't really matter. If you want to be really rigorous, I think the better way to do it is the first way I did it, where you get the uh, color separations by taking the image itself and then multiplying copies of it by the red, by green, and by blue, and then merging those down. Um, because there's a, there's a slight difference in the way color management is done between the data that comes out of the channels and the image itself. Okay, now we'll do the subtractive color separations. Here's a photo I took of someone getting out of a vintage bus, and I'm gonna duplicate it so that there are three layers that are all the same. Now, what we're gonna do is take the upper layer and Control-I, invert it so that it's uh, photographic negative. Then we're going to add a solid color above and let's make the solid color red okay now let's set this to multiply and merge down now i'm going to say control i one more time that's the cyan sap you'll notice that this bright white light needs to be white in all of the different separations because white times white times white is white. Because white has a lot in common with white and what's, whatever is in common when colors are multiplied survives the mix. This area here is black and so it's gonna need to be flooded with color in each of the color seps because uh, cyan times magenta times yellow is black because those colors all three together have nothing in common with each other. In pairs, they have something in common with each other, but not when all three are put together. So let's turn this off for a second, and we'll go to uh, solid color, and let's work our way down. We did red. Now let's do green. Okay. And multiply. And merge down. And control I one more time. Oh, did I not control I it? I don't think I did. No, I didn't. So uh, control Z. Let's work my way back up. Here we are. I'm going to go back to that layer. I'm going to invert it. There we go. Now I'm going to multiply that down or merge down. And I'm going to invert that one more time. And now there's our cyan, their magenta sap. I'm going to close that off for a second. Make a color again, solid color. We're working our way down. We did red. We did green. Now we're doing blue. Um, set this to multiply. Merge down. 
and I did it again. It's very easy to do. Uh, go back words, and I need to invert the photo. Photographically invert it. Control I. Now times blue. And merge down. Now control I again. There's our yellow separation. So if we could put this together with this, and we let's 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 expand this just so we have a little extra room image. Canvas size and percent. We'll go 400 percent. So we have room for three next to each other plus extra. And we'll do 200 percent. So we have a little room above. And I did that wrong. Um, let's do that one more time. Image canvas size. And we want it to be the width to be 400 percent and the height to be 200 percent. There we go. I guess that's just a bigger image than I realized. Um, so let's see, we go here and we set this to multiply. And we set this next one to multiply. And we could set this bottom one to multiply, but it's going to be on bottom, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so now there's your image. And if I go back to here, and I grab, pull that out, pull that out. So you see that um, cyan and yellow, what do they have in common? They have green in common. So green survives. Cyan and magenta, what do they have in common? They have blue in common. Blue survives. Um, magenta and yellow, what do they have in common? Red. And finally, if you put all three together, you get that full color image reconstructed.